berries in a kiwi. Mm. I, I don't know where that kiwi came from. But you had a snack. I wanted to bring a snack too. I a kiwi. Oh my god. Are you alright, Coco? <laughs> What's up, guys? We are starting our first episode of a series we like to call CarCast. Can you explain to them what that's not, CarCast is? It's not is? the name of the series, oh. it's just the name of the, the format. Yeah, the format is a <laughs> CarCast, like you know how there are podcasts. Yeah, the idea is like a, a podcast, mm -hmm. but instead we'll have footage of where we're driving. So yeah, you're in and the, the car. car with us. You'll have me, I my name is Sana. You'll have Coco over here, our cat. Look up, Coco. Look up, Coco. She doesn't know what's going on. There is minimal, minimal things happening in there. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You know, we're okay with that. And Barry, you want to introduce yourself? My name is Barry. I don't have any conversation topics for today. What I like about the car cast uh, is that it's very low pressure, meaning. Yeah. It's chill. We don't have to say anything because you have the drive to just enjoy. I mean, there may be periods where we just, we just relax. Yeah. Maybe we just enjoy the drive. As you can see, Barry is a very mellow kind of guy. And I am what they like to say, uh, uncontained personality. <laughs> so I, I, I cannot find, you know, silence very comforting. I like to talk a lot. Um, but yeah, we just started this because we found ourselves ourselves driving a lot, like a lot. It's crazy how often we drive. And it's not about like the frequency as in like we drive like seven days a week. It's about how much we drive in one day. And um, there's a really good story about how we accidentally drove like five more hours than expected. Which story is this? This is the skiing story. Can you tell them the skiing the story? Skiing story. Oh, the big bear. Yeah, story. the big oh, bear yeah. story. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in LA, the closest real ski resort is, is called Big Bear Ski Resort, I guess. Yeah. And, and we went one. We're not big skiers. We we, we go. That was my um, second time. And uh, on the way there, well, there's actually two stories. So let, let's tell you the first time we went to Big Bear. Okay. Yeah. The first time it was Christmas yeah. Day. Mm -hmm. And. We're on the way, we see like uh, on one of those signs, like one of those billboards uh, you see on the, on the highway, on the way it says like ski chains required. Or is it not ski chains? Snow chains. Snow chains. Snow chains. Snow chains required. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Uh, I disregard it. Um, I, I vaguely knew that it had something to do with like the tires you need a, it's like for snow, but like we're, we're driving here in this uh, two door Challenger, it's like a coupe and on the way there, we see a lot of traffic build up, mm -hmm. and then eventually, as we're getting up closer to the to the mountain, we 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 see like a checkpoint where there's where they're they're like asking people to make sure that you have tire chains on, um, which we did not have, and the only way around is if you have like an all-wheel drive car. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we've been driving maybe an hour and a half from LA, yeah, and we're far away from like the closest city that you can get any sort of I, like we're in the mountains so we have to turn around it's also christmas day <laughs> yeah so we're, everything's close we're trying to find snow chains uh, at this point we were supposed to get to the ski place uh but now it's like 11 o'clock and we're searching we're calling car shops or something where we can find tire chains uh but instead um we ended up at this like gas station what was it a gas station yeah it was like a gas station, convenience store kind of vibe. Yeah, and then that was the only place that had to that had like uh, snow ch snow chains, mm -hmm. and it ripped us off. It was like two hundred bucks because I knew people like really needed it, and it was the only place that you could get it. Uh, we go back up the mountain. Now it's been like two and a half, three hours since we left in the morning. Um, yeah. You know, and 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 finally when we get to the checkpoint. And we start putting on the chains, they say, ah, it's no longer required. So like, Can you oh, imagine? And we pay this crazy overpriced um, dollar value. Like, we paid a crazy price for the snow chains because first it's Christmas, everything's closed. And they were just overcharging like crazy because they knew they had like a business, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it was. It was quite crazy. <laughs> What's funny about this car cast is you're going to see my great driving skills. <laughs> oh my god. 
<laughs> anyway, we didn't end up getting to the actual ski part of the day until like 3 p.m. It got dark like at 5:30, so we, yeah, that that was that was your first ski experience. It was it was, it was fun, but uh, it took a while to get there. Next year we run it back. Now it's like January. This was like a couple months ago. Yeah. What was the story for that one? How much we drove in that one day. Oh yeah. So okay. I can tell that story. Basically, um, we had a lesson. Like we said, for like that was like our second time skiing together. And um, we scheduled a lesson for, I think it was for 9.30. Yeah. Waking up at like 6 a.m., you know, two hour drive, left at like 6.30. We're like, we're good. Like, we're chilling. We're going to make that 9.30 lesson. No, we did not make that 9.30 lesson. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Again, this time we came prepared. We had those snow chains with us in the back trunk, you know, not going to let that go to waste. And when we... Um, Got to the center checkpoint, you know, we got upon the snow chains. And there was also about like 25 more minutes of traffic at that point. So we're like, okay, the ETA is a little close to 930, but I think we were still going to make it. And we start putting on the snow chains. Very lost. These are like the type of snow chains that are just like straight up metal. Like the, they're very complicated and very heavy. And we're just like, we have no idea what we're doing. There's like instructions on the bag, but like, do I don't know. I, put, do I, I, watched look the, like I, I watched the YouTube video. Yeah, but there's no the service at that point, so we couldn't even like look up anything. And, the, and um, we attempted to put them on. They were kind of loose. So we like, like it, basically when you put it around the tires, the section that is supposed to tighten around the tires was a little weirdly loose. So we just used and, some hair ties to fix that up. And I'm, well, I'm just using my memory from this YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> it took about like half an hour. Maybe yeah. to put it on. I don't. I, I didn't even do it wrong. I don't. I don't even think I'd put it on right. Yeah. So, yeah, and we spent maybe like twenty minutes, and I'm like, all right, our ETA is now like nine forty. We're missing that lesson, but it's no big deal. No big deal. We'll just we'll we'll, we'll try to hit the next lesson, which is at eleven thirty. And um, we start driving, and this is a back wheel drive car, so the chains are on the back. And as we're driving up the mountain, like maybe like two minutes in, we just hear the most worst screeching sounds of all time. Or like, it wasn't screeching; it was like a tapping sound. It was like yeah, like but very loud. Like we knew that the chains were like hitting the inside part of the car. Yeah. And we're like, okay, so we go to the back, add some more hair ties to make it, you know, try to fix this a little janky. But <laughs> and basically, um, we kept driving. We're like, all right, seems tight enough. But then. About 10 minutes later, the car just starts freaking out. Like, the car stops driving. All the lights on my dashboard. All the lights, yeah. Every all the lights. Every light was just flashing in and out. Yeah, they're all flashing. And I was driving at the time. I completely lost control of the wheel. Like, I couldn't move the wheel anymore. And the tire, like, the car was moving on its own. It was basically like a zombie car just working on its own. <laughs> Out, like all dead but and I'm like okay I'm sliding off on the side there's a cliff right here we're like very, very high up on the mountain this is very bad and I'm thinking to myself you know I'm from upstate New York I'm driven in the snow I know what I'm doing no I did not know what I was doing I was freaking out <laughs> and then I just turn the car off people have to go around us it's very awkward and we just like sit there we're like Okay, do we need to get the car towed? We don't even have service. Like, what do at, we do? At this point, we, we gave up on the lesson at 9 Oh, yeah. We were Cause now standing it was, there for so long. It was like 9.15 now. And no, it was much later. Was it? Okay. Much later. Like, once we got the chains on, it was probably around 10. We were thinking we could reach that 11.30 lesson. Oh, yeah. We, think we thought we could just get yeah. the second lesson yeah. of the day. Um, and yeah, we were very close to just calling, like, a, a tow truck. Mm -hmm. uh, to just come get the car because we couldn't really drive it. Yeah. Uh, but then what we do? Because we, we ended up going. We just we yeah. Just well, it. so it was, after the car freaked out, I was like, "All right, let's just take off the chains. We're past the checkpoint. These chains aren't going to work for us. They're going to like seriously damage the car." We take off the chains. Mm, that's what we did. Yeah. And at that point, like, it's very slippery. You know, there's no winter tires in this car. We're in LA. Like, it's very slippery. But I was, you know, still feeling very confident that I could drive through this. Yeah. And around, it took us a very long time. Like we stopped for a long time. I think we arrived at Big Bear around 12. We started driving at 6.30. Yeah. <laughs> we got there at 12 and we're like, all right, <laughs> let's just eat lunch before we go skiing, We I went guess. to Subway, yeah. Yeah, we that went was, to Subway, we got lunch. Starving. They were out of all bread except flatbread, so it was very sad. 
and then <laughs> and then we uh yeah we we, we got to, we got the big bear and we I went, we asked the lady like hey we, we missed our lesson <laughs> she was like your 9 30 lesson that was three hours ago <laughs> yeah and so we we capped the next lesson which was like at two i think yeah and we we took our lesson at two and from we from two to four was our lesson and then at that point it was like starting to get late and we were just we just left oh and then that's that's the worst part here here's an here's the worst part as we're leaving the ski place we thought we could beat some traffic so we we go a little bit early we're out, we're out of there like before five keep in mind our driving uh we've already driven six hours so far yeah. on a trip that should have been two and we got like two three hours of skiing in we're like all right that's that's solid and we hit the road eta going home is like three hours and we're like oh man that's terrible three hours because it's supposed to take like two and a half or something and then as we're as we're actually driving that eta just goes up and up and was up. it two and a half it was a lot more it was three and no, a half. no it's supposed to be two and a half yeah, yeah it started yeah. off at like three or three and a half and then we did it ended up being well oh my gosh. how i don't even know how to but we were on the road it's literally just like a parking lot there must have been an accident or something it was completely still like going down this mountain. It takes about half hour normally to reach the end of the mountain and to get back on the highway. But we were just still the whole time. We sat there for maybe three hours. It was yeah. crazy. And... Ended up taking basically four or four and a half, actually yeah. at least four and a half hours to get, to yeah, get from Big Bear like back to our place in Three LA. hours to get back to the beginning of the highway, one and a half more hours to get to LA. It was crazy. I, this yeah. is a trip where you're, you're supposed to drive like four and a half hours total for the day. Round the trip. Round trip. This turned into like 10 hours round trip, essentially, <laughs> with like a couple hours of skiing in there. So the moral of the story is just like, don't go outside. Just <laughs> stay at home. Like we don't, we don't need to do this. Um, but yeah, so basically the reason for this is that was we that, drive a lot. That was the explanation for the car cast? Yeah, because we <laughs> found ourselves driving a lot. Like there are a lot of situations where we drive like over eight hours in one day and we're like, we spent a lot of time in this car. So, you yeah. know, let's just like start a YouTube channel in this car that we spent a lot of time in. That's true. Show we you guys, you know, the beautiful city of Los Angeles. Yeah, we're driving through Beverly Hills right now. Yeah, this is the neighborhood section. We were just near Rodeo Drive. Um, and, you know, the thing about Barry and I is we really like neighborhoods. We love driving through these neighborhoods, looking at these $5 million homes we can't get. And it's a good time, like. Five million. It, it's a very good time. Yeah, like, well, we're in Beverly Hills, so these houses are like, definitely like $5 million or so. I saw a lot, an empty lot in Beverly Hills. And yes. uh, that was like 5.6 million, just the land. Like the land. Like All these empty. houses are at least. Empty six plus but like many of them 10 plus depending on the size mm -hmm. and like right now we're on Rodeo Drive and this is like the section with the homes like can you imagine how pricey these places are it's insane but it's fine we like to walk around the neighborhood pretend that we belong um it's a good time it really is good for runs yeah it's also good for runs um I, and yeah and if you're curious about what I'm drinking today, um, this is a latte. It's a little too milky for me. I like my coffee very black and depressing. But you know, I have this latte from this place in Larchmont Village where we live. Um, it's called Friends Coffee. Actually, they just rebranded recently. It's called Alibi Coffee now. And we have Coco, very curious. Very curious. Does she want some? <laughs> she does not want any. Fun fact about cats, they actually think the smell of coffee is so terrible to the point where they think it's like feces and they if you put like coffee beans near them they'll attempt to like bury it well clearly that's not working cause... well no coffee beans like the drink form they're just like scared of it yeah. but i think because this is, has a lot of milk in it she's like oh that doesn't smell weird um but yeah we got this cat in december she is a rag doll Fun fact, Barry's in a kiwi. We, I, I don't know where that kiwi came from. You had a snack, I wanted to bring a snack too. I'm I very, a kiwi. Oh 
Oh my god. Are you <laughs> okay, so Barry eats his kiwis with a skin on. That is weird. That's so weird. Like, look at that. I don't understand why people peel the skin off kiwis. Like any other fruit, like apples. You it's eat it with fuzzy. Skin. It's fuzzy. That's where the nutrients are. It's beautiful. I don't even know if that's true. And like, look at that. It's just going. It has nothing to do with the skin. But like, <laughs> I mean, whatever, whatever works for you. That guy's talking to me. I don't know why. He lowered the. He has to lower the window. I'm confused. Is, our, is the camera gone? No, the camera's still there. No, the camera's still there. Got us a little worried there for a second. Um, Interesting. Driving in Beverly Hills. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty weird to drink to eat a kiwi with the skin on. It's fuzzy. <laughs> the texture's all wrong. We want we don't we don't like that fuzzy texture. <laughs> like imagine like eating a coconut skin. Coconut skin is like kiwi skin. No, but you can't break into a coconut. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying this the is skin is like very weird to eat. No, it's, you got to relate it to like an apple. No, the apple skin is smooth. It's not fuzzy. All right, all right. Like this is fuzzy. It tastes good. And too. random. <laughs> I don't even know where but you got that But it is very messy from. for this car, and you know. Yes. You know, neat myself up. What I'm self-conscious about is people making fun of my driving. <laughs> the thing is, it's it's just, it's a little bit difficult to you know kind of engage in conversation while driving. What he's saying is that he cannot drive. I'm um, terrible at multitasking in general. And that's okay, you know. Um, but here I'm doing three tasks: talking, driving, and eating this kiwi. Yeah, you can tell I feel very safe in this car right now. Feeling very well, safe. We're in a safe neighborhood. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Um, Coco, what are you up to? What you got going on? She's very angry right now. She she doesn't understand where she is. <laughs> Last time she was in this car actually was when we dropped her off at my sister's for a week when we were out of town, and she was definitely very upset. So maybe she has a little PTSD, which I understand. I really do. Good kiwi. You're so cute. You want some? No. <laughs> I do not want that. Why not? <laughs> but yeah. Um, What's interesting about Beverly Hills is I don't think a lot of celebrities live here. Yeah, oh, look at that guy in a pen shirt. Oh, no way. He went to that we went school. To Penn. <laughs> We sold our souls. The things you see. We sold our souls to the University of Pennsylvania and went there. We actually graduated in 2018. That's I right. moved over to New York for about a year. They moved out here to LA. They moved here right out of college. You're telling them everything about us. Is that safe? Yeah. I don't think they can find <laughs> out anything about us. About I don't know if that's safe. <laughs> I don't think this is our first video. We haven't established that connection yet. Oh, my bad. Barry doesn't trust you guys, but I do. It'll take time. I time. trust you guys. <laughs> it takes time to build trust. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was, I was looking, you know, uh, at celebrity addresses, and very few of them are in Beverly Hills. They're usually like in, in more, uh, you know, quieter, less, more low-key neighborhoods. Quentin Tarantino yeah. uh, has a place up in Hollywood Hills, mm -hmm. and what I when I found his place through, you know, my stalker method, methods, Googling. I then went to Zillow to find a house, to, to find his house, and noticed there was a house for sale next to him that was relatively affordable for like, for, you know, common people. It was like two- <laughs> The two, commoners. <laughs> like, you know, two something, two something million. Still expensive, of course, but you know, it's, uh, I was thinking like if someone moves in across the street from Quentin Tarantino, at that point, do you pretend that you don't know a celebrity lives there? Or do you embrace it? Yeah, I really feel like considering that you found him with stalking methods, <laughs> probably should not, you know. Like you'd bake some goods, bake. right? Like if we just move in and we want to. But like, when have we ever baked any goods? When have we bought a house? That's no, you bake goods all the time. We, we gave it to our neighbor that one time. That's true. And if we were to try to give it to our next door neighbor, and we, you know, knock on their door and out comes Quentin Tarantino. Would you say, 
Oh, Quentin Tarantino. I didn't know you lived here. That'd be pretty <laughs> weird. I feel like he's low-key. Like, with directors, it's a little different. Yeah. I mean, everyone knows who Quentin Tarantino is, obviously. But when it comes to directors, um, I feel like... <laughs> You're just see, worried about my driving. Yeah, I, I really... Oof. <laughs> well, we learned that she should not eat a kiwi and drive at the same time. Okay, we're in one piece. Anyways, so... What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So this is like Quentin Tarantino, where he's a director, you know, he's not behind the camera in front the way of the camera. act or yeah, in front of the camera the way actors are. I feel like he might he might be all happy about it. Who knows? Maybe he doesn't get recognized a lot. He's just a regular old white man. Um Yeah, but do we do we just assume <laughs> So do we do we pretend to be surprised then? I would yes. You should definitely act surprised because it's creepy otherwise. Okay, like you know he lives there. He's like, dang, I really can't get any privacy. Because that would be cool. Maybe, well, that's, maybe that's what we should do. If anything, he's not going to answer his door. Like, he probably has, you know, people working at his house. You think so? Yeah, okay. like, whoever, someone yeah, else yeah. is going to answer the door. It's not going to be him. And then we won't even be able to, I, I really doubt we'll even <laughs> know, like, he won't come out. They'll just be like, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you for dropping these off. And then close the door. But well, we're like, bound to eventually see him if we're living across the street from him. I don't know. Oh, like, like, I'm sure he likes to... privacy. Like, he gets in his vehicle at his house and then gets out of the vehicle. You know what I mean? I suppose. I mean, don't you just naturally see your next door neighbor, though? That's like a normal part of living. Like, we, we, like you'll, you'll just see your neighbor. And do yeah. we, are we just supposed to pretend that we don't know? I think what I would do is come with a, you know, our, your signature uh, cheesecake muffins. Cheesecake muffins. This is not my signature. The chocolate cheesecake muffins that you make. Those are really good. Oh, the muffins. Cupcakes. The banana oh, bread. Oh, the banana muffins. bread. The banana bread. No cheesecake. cheesecake is in them. There's no cheesecake in them? No. There's cream cheese. No, that's not my signature. Whatever you make was really good. There was. Uh... I made that once, and that's my signature. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, we'll make some of those. We'll bring, we'll bring it over to all of our neighbors, not just the, the that house that we know is from Quentin Tarantino. We'll go left door, right door, neighbor, mm -hmm. and then once we get to Quentin Tarantino, we'll be like, "Oh, we just wanted to, uh, you know, say hello to all of our new neighbors." Uh, by the way, I recognize you from movies. You're Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> uh, he would then, be like, "Okay." I really don't think he's going to answer the door, though. Really? Okay. So you think yeah. that scenario would never even come up? Yeah, I don't think it's going to come up. I feel like he doesn't answer his own door. Like I just. So we just can't be neighbors. We can't be like friendly neighbors too. I mean, honestly, okay. Do people, are people friendly with their neighbors? Like, do they really, like, I mean, cause this is like LA, it's not like a suburban neighborhood where you're all like, hey guys. Like I feel like in LA it's, or major cities in general probably be like more yeah, but reserved. This is, this is like a, this is like a neighborhood in, in, um, it's like not in the city city. It's like up in the hills of Hollywood. I feel like you could still be neighborly. Take the celebrity part of equation out of it. It's green. You could definitely just, you know, have have some neighbors that you're friendly with. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I don't know. I think it'd be interesting. I'm sure it's pretty common in LA where your neighbor happens to be someone famous. But yeah. Alright guys, well, I hope you enjoyed driving with us to Beverly Hills. <laughs> Um, next up, you'll see another neighborhood. What neighborhood? We don't know. Subscribe to find out. I would be. I wouldn't be surprised if they just muted the whole way and just enjoyed the driving. Enjoyed making fun of my. This guy's little faith in this. <laughs> I have faith in you guys. I trust you guys. Bye bye. Bye.